Hi there, and welcome to WB Fund Woodworking. I'm Don. This is a shop update for July of 2019. I decided not to put a specific date on this video because I wanted it to come out after I published the video on the assembly of the workbench base. And yes, it's all done, and I'm really excited about that. Some probably will comment that I painted the base. I'm not great at painting, and I'm not a real fond of painting, especially painting nice wood. But I decided to do that on the workbench base for a couple of reasons. First of all, I thought it would look good. I saw some workbenches that had a nice painted color on the bottom. I saw even some that were bright red and decided that that looked good. The other reason I decided was I'm using walnut and I'm also using white oak and the top is going to be rubber wood. So there's three different species of wood already and then adding the Douglas fir base in I thought just made it too many different grain patterns and too many wood colors. So painting it was my best option. Some of you may still be wondering why I use these long bolts and the nuts in these copper pipes to put the base together. I know others have used things like draw boring, and that was an option that I did have. I decided on this method of assembly for two specific reasons. The first, it allows the workbench base to be taken apart if necessary. And the second reason is I can adjust it. That means I can tighten it up if it becomes loose. Draw boring or something like that is not adjustable. As you watch the video, you probably noticed that I had to get quite inventive in making those holes go all the way through the rails. My Forstner bit obviously wouldn't go all the way, so I had to get a drill bit that would. The bit I got is a seven and a half inch Wood Owl Ultra Smooth Auger Bit. These bits are very aggressive, so if you ever use one, make sure your work is securely clamped down. I found that out the hard way. The bit I got for the copper pipe is one and one eighth inch, or 29 millimeters. I also bought a three quarter inch to use for my dog holes. Both of these bits have half inch shanks, which is 12.7 millimeters. I was very impressed on how these were packaged. They come in these tubes, which is a great place to store them. So I plan to keep both of mine in their packages. They also come with this plastic piece that protects the guide screw and the spurs of the bit. They screw off the guide screw and they screw back on. This is a great way to protect these auger bits. Some of you may be wondering what I'm planning to do with that wrench that I modified and all the other wrenches in that set that I bought. For now, I'll use them to size tenons when I turn spindles on a lathe, as can be seen here in a video by Tim Yoder. I'll modify them like I modified the end of this wrench. I rounded off the tips. I may end up doing what Alan Stratton did in Aswood Turns. He turned the same set of Harbor Freight wrenches into tenon cutters that he uses on his lathe. He showed how to do it in one of his videos. I could even turn wooden handles for the cutters like Rick Morris did in one of his videos. I'd like to interject here that I greatly appreciate those of you that have subscribed to the channel and viewed the videos. We have a lot more subscribers than we have viewers, so there's something I need to do to kind of up that if I can. So if you have any comments about that, please let me know. I'm trying to put out videos that are important to me. I know just recently I put out some videos, the safety lights. Some people didn't see that was necessary, and um, that's okay. That's, that's fine. I just find that that's something here. Of course, we just had an earthquake, a very large one, here in Southern California. We didn't feel it here, but there are people that are up in the high desert 
that uh, were probably glad they had some emergency lights in their homes if they did, because when that quake hit, I'm sure the power went off immediately. In addition to the emergency light video, I've produced several more here on YouTube. The first one that I did was the fixed drill press. It is wonderful now having a drill press where the table actually goes up and down. Some of the holes that I've drilled for the workbench and some of the holes that I'm going to have to drill in the future needed that feature to be fixed. And now that it's working, it's great. The next video was on the magnetic safety glasses. That seemed to be very well received. Since then, I've also picked up a couple more pairs of safety glasses. I decided the other day that I needed a pair for my air compressor. I had to take the air compressor in the house to fix something in the house, and I forgot to take safety glasses. So I think now what I'm going to do is attach a pair of safety glasses to the tank of my air compressor, and that way I'll always have safety glasses when I use the air compressor. Then I did a video on the woodpecker's clamp rack. Well, that was the first one that I've had that's had two thumbs down. And I'm sure part of that is the fact that some people just don't like woodpeckers because they think their tools are too expensive. And I'll have to agree with you. A lot of their tools are very expensive and you can buy something for less money that will do exactly the same thing. But in this case, the clamp rack is really a good quality clamp rack. It holds a lot of clamps in a small space. And that's what I needed for my shop. The steel is really high quality, thick steel. It's not flimsy at all. Now, other people I'm sure may have disliked the video because I can make my own. And I've mentioned that in other videos that I've done. Yes, you could make your own and I could have made one too. I just don't have the time. My clamps have been sitting in a box literally for 10 years since we moved. The same box that the movers moved them in, they've been sitting in and some of them been spilling out onto the floor and I just needed to get them organized and I didn't have time to make my own. So I bought one. Then I did a remake of the Nova Comet 2 video. That video by far has had the most views on here on YouTube. It's had more viewers than any other video that I put out, except maybe the one about the shop. That one's had a lot too. So I needed to remake that one because of the irritating background music. Some of you complained that the background music on that was very irritating and it was hard to hear. So I remade that. And what I did when I remade it is I added a few things extra and I took out some things I didn't think were necessary. So that is a new video. It's not a total remake of the other video. It's a, actually a different video. And then I also have a new lavalier microphone. My microphone just quit on me one day and I needed to get one of the videos done, so I had to buy a new one. I think this one sounds a little better than the other one. Um, maybe you'll tell me whether it does or doesn't. Speaking of videos, this is where I do my editing. The workbench video is being uploaded to YouTube right now while I'm working on editing this particular video. Have recently, I've started using a new program to do the captions for the videos. You may have noticed a little bit of a difference, and you'll notice more of a difference coming up because I learned a new trick with that program just this week. In fact, I incorporated that about halfway through the workbench video. Speaking of workbenches, I have a couple of books that I'd like to recommend. The first one is The Workbench. And this one's by a gentleman named Lon Schelning. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'll leave a link in the description. This covers all kinds of different styles of workbenches, not just one for joinery like what I'm trying to make. So this is a good all-around workbench book. And I recommend it for those of you that are looking for different ideas for your workshop. And of course, the other one is Workbenches by Christopher Schwartz. Now, this is an older version than the one they have now. It doesn't cover quite as much, but I still found it was very useful and used it quite a bit in designing my workbench. 
So if you really want to know about workbenches and how they're designed and why they're designed the way they are, this book is excellent. And it also comes with a DVD on workbenches. This I can put into my computer and play it in there. And even it has a Holzapfel bench on the front. And another DVD that I found useful was Build the 21st Century Workbench. And this is by Robert Lang. Robert's a real good woodworker and uh, I, do, I didn't use a lot of the ideas from here, but this is sort of what got me started on making a workbench. So it's a real nice DVD. There we go. Hi. You could go. Good girl. Yeah, the good girl. So good girl. You good girl. Oh, I get kisses. Oh, I got kisses. Okay, good girl. I was just thinking, I've created almost 60 videos since I started the workbench. So I have been busy out in the shop. It's just the workbench had to be put on the back burner quite a few different times. In one of my recent videos, I mentioned this California Air Tools compressor. I decided not to do a full video on it, but I thought I'd put a little bit in on this shop update. This has really been an excellent tool to have in the workshop. I used to have one of those big pancake compressors, and every time that came on, it scared me. I jumped, and I didn't like carrying it around because it was very heavy. So I decided to get one of these because I heard they were very quiet. Let me turn it on for you. I did not raise the volume at all or lower the volume. That's how loud it is. In fact, it comes on and I don't even notice it. I did put a new hose on it recently. One day I came in my shop and I heard this hissing sound and the compressor was running. Well, what happened was this old hose that I had left over from my pancake compressor sprung a leak. And so I took that longer one off and put a short one on. Obviously, I could put a longer piece on this one if I wanted to, but it's really nice to have a short one for blowing things off. I'm really happy with this California air compressor. I do understand that some people have had problems. I haven't had any problems with mine, except for the leak in the hose, but that was the hose's problem, not the compressor. It's a very quiet, lightweight compressor. I have just the small model because that's all I need. It does run a 23 gauge and an 18 gauge nailer very well. Another tool that I added to my shop recently, you may have seen on my new clamp rack. These are Jorgensen's six inch F clamps. They came in a package of six. I was in Lowe's one day getting some hardware and they were sitting there on sale and a woodworker can never have enough clamps. One of the things that I've noticed about these Jorgensen clamps that I'm not really thrilled about is these pads seem to slip off. I've had it happen several times now with this pad on the screw and the top pad has slid off on me once on a glue up as well. So I have to watch that when I'm using them for a glue up. At least the Jorgensen's are much more heavy duty than these Columbia clamps that I was using before. The bar is a whole lot thicker and stronger, and so is the steel at both ends, and these didn't have pads at all. I'd like to ask a special favor of those of you that watch this update. You're the core of my viewers, and I greatly appreciate you. But the only way that I'm going to gain a little bit more in the algorithm that YouTube has is if I get more thumbs up on my videos and if I get more comments. Those things will greatly help. It'll catch YouTube's attention and put my videos out to more people. So I greatly appreciate it if you do that for me. Thank you.
You may have noticed these three signs behind me earlier in this video. The one in the center I mentioned when I did the video on the safety glasses. It's most likely a collector's item since the new Yankee workshop is not being produced anymore and they're certainly not giving away these stickers like they did for several years. The one on the right has been on the wall for quite a while, but you probably couldn't read it from the videos that I've done. But it's one of my favorite sayings about tools. The one on the left, I think, is my wife's favorite. Caution, slow man at work says it all. I'm sure those of you that have been patiently waiting for the workbench to be finished fully agree. Now I just need to get out and buy that sheet of plywood that I need. I went over to my local Home Depot. They didn't have the pure bond pine plywood that I was looking for. The next day, Pam and I decided to go over to the San Diego Zoo Safari Park that's fairly close by and saw the kangaroos and the lionesses, which were really up close. And on the way home, look what popped into the back of the van. Yes, a full 4x8 piece of plywood fit into the back of our van. It turns out that the Home Depot we stopped at on the way home didn't have the pine either, but they did have some beautiful birch that someone had ordered and decided not to buy, so I ended up with much better wood than I had expected. It has a lot more plies than the pine did, and it's much better quality for less money. Well, that's it for this shop update. I greatly appreciate those of you that have been viewing my videos and subscribing to the channel. If you like this one, please give it a thumbs up down below. Leave any questions or comments. Tell me if you like the new lavalier microphone as well. And thank you all very much for watching.